All right. Welcome those of you in person. Glad to have each of you this evening and those that are joining us by live stream. Um, we will uh, begin with some announcements this evening and then um, move into our study. First of all, I'll remind you that those knives for the, the junior fundraiser, junior youth fundraiser, are available through Sunday. Sunday's the last day to make those orders. There are catalogs back there on the fellowship hall table, um, so be aware of that. Um, one of the joys we're going we're gonna to get to more in a minute is that we had a lot of guests on Sunday. Um, praise God. If you know somebody that was here that's not normally here, get us their name and address. We'll try to get them a welcome note. Um, we were able to chase some of them down, but there were just a lot of, a lot of folks here. And so that goes for those of you that are watching um, online as well. Um, also, as a concern, of course, we're going to be remembering uh, the Glenda Sherman family who passed away uh, on Monday. Please continue to remember Eddie and Nicole and their family in your prayers. Um, those of you that have not heard, the funeral will be this Saturday here at the church at 11. Um, there will be family time from 10 until 11. Before that, and then there will be a meal afterwards. And so we need folks that might be willing to help serve as well as folks to donate dishes and, and provide food for the family. Um, and so most importantly, as I said, to keep those, keep those folks in your prayers. Um, and so I've got a couple other announcements. I'll send information about uh, around one is of course the the concerts for weekday religious education coming up in May here at Antioch, but it, they are ticketed events. Uh, the Hoppers on Friday night, the 24th of May. Ernie Haas and Signature Sound Promised Land Quartet on Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Um, all proceeds benefit the Shindo County weekday religious education. And so you need to go online and get tickets, or there is a phone number here that you can call. Uh, also, uh, an event going on at Calvary Covenant Brethren Church down in Winchester, um, one of our sister congregations in the region. They're having a, a, a play, a musical, In His Steps. And some of you probably have read that book or seen the movie or whatever. Um, I remember reading it years ago, and um, a great, great story. Um, and so that's coming up on April the 19th, 7 p.m. Um, no charge, free will offering will be taken for that. Also, uh, Becky sent out information, if you're not on our email list, you didn't get it, but hopefully everybody is, uh, about a bus trip she's uh, put together for Sight and Sound again this year. It's going to be on August the 6th and um, to see Daniel. Uh, I think I've shared with you before, <laughs> sadly, um, Sight and Sound raised the prices of all their seats by $25. Um, that's a big jump. <laughs> And so, obviously, that impacts the cost of the trip, um, but the details are here, and um, so there, it's a bus trip, and last year we were pretty well able to fill the bus from Antioch, um, and um, that's who it's going to be open to first, and if there are seats left over, uh, Sunshine Ministries will help us to fill those. So... Um, Jay, would you pass those things around for me, please? Um, that's the uh, information about those different items that I've mentioned. And um, <clears throat> who's got a joy they'd like to share tonight? All the rain, praise God. I, you know, last year right now, we were, we were hurting. <laughs> and we were hurting for a good while after this. But uh, praise God, uh, we've got some rain in the ground and um, thankful for that. Other joys? Praise God.
Amen. Absolutely. Um, Penny Adams, praising God for her sister Deb, went to the doctor today, took out all five ports. Um, and so she's done really well. Praise God. Thank you for your prayers. Continue to keep Deb in your prayers. Um, she's probably going to have to have some follow-up radiation for some cancer found in one of the lymph nodes. And so um, continue to pray for Deb O'Connell and praise God for uh, answered prayers already. Other joys tonight. Praise God. Family promise, uh, steak dinner, uh, great success. And so praise be to God for that. And uh, thanks to everybody that was able to support it and participate. Yeah, remember uh, John and Amy Martino. John's the pastor at the Calvary CBC Church, and they have traveled to Papua New Guinea. They're going to be there a couple of weeks, I think, to do uh, some mission work. And so pray for God's blessings on them as they do that. Uh, CBC authorized a gift to help buy Bibles um, in that country's language. And no, I'm sorry, this was a gift to provide a computer, I think, that the folks, the webs that are the missionaries there, had requested as their their most important need right now to be able to minister to the people. So, um, but uh, pray for John and Amy. Other uh, joys tonight. I did mention we had a lot of guests on, on Sunday. That's a joy. We had a lot of folks back with us that hadn't been here. Some of whom hadn't been here since before COVID. And so, um, after uh, glad, glad to have them back. And so, thank the Lord and pray that uh, continues. Tom Kibler got a, a good report yesterday um, or Monday from his doctor regarding his cancer. It's significantly shrunk and uh, he's going to have six more weeks of chemo. Um, so keep praying. He had a treatment today and uh, they also found a possible issue with his heart. And so pray for his uh, heart test that's coming up hopefully later this week. Um, other joys tonight. Had a good meal on Sunday after the uh, worship service, the, or in between the worship services, and good time around the love feast table there uh, back on Palm Sunday. Uh, Betty Wolverton was to get home from the um, life care uh, home today, so hopefully she, she made it back home again, so uh, that's, a, that's a praise also. Any other praises tonight? Yeah, the Easter drama on Sunday and the one we had for Palm Sunday with the, um, we haven't been back together since uh, for the children from the cottage school and uh, both of those just, yeah, praise God for that. The um, Good Friday service uh, to be able to remember the Lord's crucifixion and um, all those that participated in that, so. How about concerns? What would you lift up for prayer? We mentioned the... Uh, Sherman family, continue to remember Eddie and Nicole and their family right now, and Glenda's mom, June Thompson, um, remember, remember them, remember Jane Ryman and Julie Cooper, uh, they laid their mother to rest today, uh, graveside service, and so keep their families in your prayers, and um, Saturday is also the um, service for Brian Scott, and so pray for his family uh, and lift them up as well. No, that's actually going to be at Portering the Glory uh, out on Ox Road. Other concerns tonight? Found out this morning that Gerald Kingry's in the Winchester Hospital, so pray for Gerald. Um, some breathing issues, not sure exactly what's going on, maybe fluid or whatever, so pray for him. Shirley Kerber was to have a procedure on her eye today, um, and I understand she's got another one next Wednesday as well, so um, keep Shirley in your prayers. Um, other concerns? Earthquake in Taiwan, 
this morning. Um, I haven't heard an update lately, but I think it was like 7.4. Um, pretty, pretty significant. Um, pray uh, as we prayed over John Anderson, our early service on Sunday, leaving this coming Sunday very early to go to Kentucky, uh, Mayfield, Kentucky, to work on a rebuild for disaster work with Samaritan's Purse. And so um, pray for him. The Pregnancy Center Banquet is this Friday night. Pray for God's blessing on that as well. Other concerns tonight? I uh, would ask for you to pray for my neighbor, um, Heather Kibler, uh, related to a number of folks here as well. Um, Heather had, I think it was her fourth back surgery in about a month. Um, there continues to be leaks, and so pray this is the last one, um, and she gets straightened out. Bless her heart. She's just had such a horrible time, and so pray for the situation in Israel. Our sister CBC congregations, um, one in East Berlin, Pennsylvania, Bermudian congregation, um, and their pastor, and the other one is the Battelle International Congregation in Tennessee, um, and their pastor as well. So lift them up, and our weekly prayer emphasis is to share the truth of the resurrection miracle with others. So I want to invite you to pray for um, Anita Scruggs, bro horse broke her hand, and so she is um, going to be out of commission for a little while and uh, lift her up. Um, pray for her. Also, uh, Jim and Ginger Turner. Ginger goes to the doctor tomorrow and find out what they're going to do about her back uh, with the broken rod that is there, and so lift her up, and Jim is awaiting some further tests, and so pray for him. And um, I would ask for uh, prayers for our nation, um, kind of relates to our, our study topic tonight, maybe a little bit, I don't know, but um, many of you are aware that uh, the President Biden designated Easter Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility, um, basically the holiest day of the Christian year, um, to be desecrated with an abomination, and so pray for Pray for a change of heart, change of mind, um, whatever needs to be done to be able to uh, help folks wake up and see what, what's going on. At the same time, they had a, as they always have an Easter egg roll at the White House uh, again this year, and they had National Guard children um, in an art contest to display what they do for Easter or what's special to them but they were told it could not include any religious content. This is Easter. Easter. Couldn't be any crosses, couldn't be any um, empty tombs. Um, so anyway, uh, pray for our nation. Anything else tonight? Why don't we go ahead and pray, lift these things up to the Lord this evening. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. We thank you for the rain today. We thank you, Lord, for uh, as we think back uh, what was going on two weeks ago tonight with the high winds and the fires that were destroying homes uh, even at this hour. Uh, Father, we're thankful that it is now and not then. I thank you for sparing the homes uh, of many that could easily have burned. I thank you for our firefighters and squadmen and first responders police and for keeping them safe. And I thank you that no life was lost in all the fires uh, throughout this state. And Lord, I, I pray that you would be with those who did lose homes, that you would help them as they get readjusted and resettled, raise up what is needed for them. And uh, we pray for those who are serving them as well. Father, we praise you for answered prayers. A number of those that were shared this evening were very grateful and very thankful for healing. We thank you, Lord, for special celebrations, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And Father, we're, we're grateful for time with family, and we're thankful for physical healing for those who have been uh, struggling. Father, we want to we wanna pray and lift up to you those concerns that have been mentioned tonight. You've heard each of them, and so we ask for your special mercy and grace 
Father, our hearts especially uh, go out to the Sherman family, and we pray for your comfort and peace to be with them uh, during this time. And Father, uh, I pray that um, you would walk with them and help us to, to walk with them as well. Father, we uh, pray for those who are hurting physically this evening. We pray for healing and wholeness. Lord, we pray for the banquet on Friday night for the Pregnancy Center and that you would bless that event. We pray, too, that you would be with John as he prepares to leave on Sunday to go and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. And, uh, Lord, give him safety, give him a good experience, and help all to go smoothly and well. Father, um, we pray for the folks in Taiwan tonight and pray for protection against further uh, damage and, uh, and loss of life. We pray, God, that you would be with them as their lives have been completely upended. And, Father, uh, with what's going on there politically and everything else, we pray, God, for your Holy Spirit to be at work and protect and, and bless and care for those people. Father, I, I pray for our nation. I pray for godly leaders. I pray, Lord, that you would frustrate the plans of those who are godless and um, seek to lead us in, in ways of evil. And I pray, God, that you would raise up uh, godly individuals that would lead us in your pathway. Father, change hearts or change people, and Lord, do what needs to be done that um, we might seek your face in spirit and in truth. We do invite your help this evening as we study. We pray for the help of your Holy Spirit, and we thank you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we talked, um, and we said we were going to be talking tonight about uh, the subject of um, woke. <laughs> what does it mean to be woke, and what does that have to do with the church, and uh, so forth. And so I did hand out... Um, uh, a little guide uh, to the folks that were here in person. If you're at home uh, and you're joining us virtually, I'm sorry, I can't get one to you, or I'd hand it through the, uh, the, the TV or the uh, computer here. But um, we'll be going through, we're going to be talking about that, and I think Bernie's got uh, able to get some of the slides up that hopefully folks that are online will be able to follow that, and those that are in person will be able to as well. Um, I first shared a majority of this information at the uh, CBC uh, annual meeting and worship conference last summer. Um, uh, there's some additions to it since then as things continue to change and evolve and as time goes by and, and everything uh, takes place. But uh, so a couple of you all, I think, were there, and so it might be a little bit of a repeat for you all, but. Um, you might be able to help us through, and if anybody has questions, as always, send them in over the live stream, shout them out here in person, whatever else, and we'll be uh, glad to try to, to deal with that. Um, the uh, main, you know, we want to talk tonight about the dangers of wokeness. What does it mean? Um, it's a word that's thrown around an awful lot, and a lot of people, some people have gotten in trouble for trying to define it, using common definitions that are out there, and, and immediately someone will jump on them and accuse them of being racist because they didn't define it in the way they thought it should be defined. Um, and so uh, we're going to do our best to try to define the word. What does it mean? What does it have to do with the Bible? Um, we're going to look at these questions and touch on how believers should respond and react, um, and it'll probably take more than the time we have tonight, um, but that's okay. We can, uh, we can finish it up next time or, or whatever it takes. So um, that's kind of where we're headed and what we want to do. And so let's begin with um, a bit of a definition of woke. Um, you know, most of us, would, whenever we say we're woke, it means we've been asleep <laughs> and we just woke up. Um, and... Um, Sometimes that happens in church, as we talked about on Sunday, and um, this is uh, along that line of, of waking up and being aware, but it's uh, in a little bit different vein. The, the term came from back in 1938, one of the blues singers um, known as Lead Belly, um, Hootie Ledbetter, advised blacks in one of his um, songs, best stay woke, keep their eyes open. And he was talking about racial violence. Um, and at that time, 
there was a fair amount of that that was going on against blacks, and so this was kind of a an awareness message that was out there to try to help folks um, keep from being hurt, dan- endangered, or whatever from some of the violence that was taking place. Um, that's where most folks trace the beginning of the word when it's used in the context that it's used mostly in today. Uh, in 1962, um, several years later, um, William Melvin Kelly wrote an article in the New York Times uh, on beatniks and slang within Harlem uh, jazz, and um, the title of the the uh, article was, If You're Woke, You Dig It. Um, you know what's going on, and you're aware of what these terms are and, and the slang terms that were being thrown around. And so this was kind of a, a second major uh, use of the word that really took off in 2014, um, which is now, what, 10 years ago. Um, and... Um, it really kind of exploded on social media. Remember 10 years ago, there was a situation in uh, Ferguson, Missouri. Um, Michael Brown um, had been killed, and the story was that it was because of police brutality and that um, there needed to be a, a big, strong reaction to that. And so that began to ferment and to grow, um, BLM, what does BLM stand for? Black Lives Matter, um, begin to use this word woke to be able to rally support um, for people to become socially active, to push back, to fight against um, racism, injustice, and police brutality. Um, and I would also add there to fight against any perceived racism perceived injustice, perceived police brutality, Um, because in some instances, as video evidence clearly revealed, um, it was not always police brutality. It was not always unjust. Um, And so, but the word became um, widely used, particularly by uh, BLM and the movement to try to to get people to wake up and to be to be woke about what's going on with racism. Um, a magazine. It is a Christian publication. Um, been around for a long time. I used to get it years ago, um, and I let that one drop. I don't have time to read all the magazines I get now, uh, but it's a very good magazine. It's very solid. Um, and if you if you ever have an opportunity, I think they also have a website like everybody else now, and and um, it's one of those dependable places that that I think you can depend on for for news. Um, Woke now includes CRT. Uh, what is CRT? Critical race theory. Um, critical race theory, and um, that's been incorporated in. We're going to talk about uh, what critical race theory is, what it means, what does it have to do with the church, um, what does the Bible have to say about it. Um, and World Magazine also says that. Um, being woke now includes also um, a good bit of left-wing political ideology, um, and uh, most of that has been incorporated into um, this whole woke and and all of that. A uh, couple of dictionaries that we're usually turned to uh, have added the word in this in this type of usage. An Oxford English Dictionary um, says that uh, if you're woke, that means you're alert to racial or social discrimination and injustice. Um, you're, you've woken up to that. You've been awakened about what's going on. And, um, and if you're not aware of all of the social discrimination, then you're not woke. You're still asleep. You're still uh, in the dark about, about what is going on. Um, University of Miami, critical consciousness uh, to intersecting systems of oppression. 
Anybody want to explain that to me? <laughs> um, that's uh, we're, we're going to talk about some of those terms as we go along tonight, but that's um, a little bit of the challenge uh, with dealing with this whole area. Um, the word intersectionality is thrown out there sometimes, and um, systems that have been in place to oppress people, um, particularly those who are not white. Um, and so this is a, a definition that has come from the University of Miami. Um, according to the, uh, some of the Internet sources, got to be careful there, right? Um, but it's a, a, a pop word, a popular word that describes a state of being awakened to the reality that racism is systemic. Um, deeply ingrained as an accepted and assumed part of our culture that, as we'll talk about a little bit more later, if we're white, we probably don't even see it. We don't even realize it's there um, because we're not aware of it. We're not woke. But once you become aware of it, it's, it's systemic. Systemic means that it's in every aspect of culture, everywhere you look, everything in culture um, is somehow tainted by racism. That's the, the theory of being woke. Um, and so uh, I remember years ago when Roundup first came out, the, the weed killer, Roundup. It was called systemic because it goes throughout the whole plant. It, 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 all you got to do is get a little bit of it on a leaf and it'll kill the whole thing. Um, and... And so systemic racism means it's all throughout all of culture, all of society, everything um, from music to jobs to justice in our legal system to drug use to the way police address crime to church to everything in society um, <clears throat> has been contaminated by, by racism. And so um, that's the part of the definition, part of the understanding of this thing of, of being woke. Um, <clears throat> wokeness identifies racism as the fundamental cause of disparities. Um, why there's a difference um, among racial minorities and um, that believe that racism underlies all of Western society as I said earlier, everything that that goes on in in America, in in Europe, in any Western country, um, has been contaminated by this thing of racism, and it perpetuates. It, it keeps going the unequal distribution of privileges between whites and people of color. Um, that these things have been in place for a long time, and that's why. Um, that's why in, in this teaching, those who are not white can never get ahead, uh, and those who are white always have the advantage no matter what it is that you're talking about. Um, wokeness generally assumes that those who are white are inherently unable to identify racism. If we are indeed white, we, can't even, we don't even know it's there. We don't even see it. We don't know about it. Um, we're not aware of it, and we, we're incapable of doing that. Um, in addition, if you're awoke, then part of your job is to educate others and to promote um, social justice, and notice I capitalize that. Um, Christians should be concerned about social justice. Christians should be concerned about racism. We're going to talk about that. There is racism. There has been. Um, we're we're going to talk about that larger issue, but social justice is trying to make sure that people are treated justly. Jesus talked about that. Isaiah talked a lot about that. And so that's actually a very biblical concept. Uh, the problem is it has been hijacked in many ways um, by people of certain political persuasions to try to force agendas that are not exactly in line with what Jesus would teach what he what he has taught um, 
there's additional aspect of now. Remember, we said it kind of started most recently. I mean, yeah, it was back in 38 and then 62, but most recently, when did it really come to the forefront? 2014, Ferguson, Missouri. Um, and even since then, I mean, 10 years ago doesn't sound like that long, right? Um, but you know how fast society is changing, how fast norms are, are changing. And so now, um, wokeness has also incorporated advocacy for transgenderism and LGBTQ issues. Um, we'll plug that in there because those folks have always been discriminated against and pushed down and, and they can never succeed even though the statistics indicate that they are some of the wealthiest individuals in the nation. Um, obviously, there's some privilege there somewhere um, or something. So anyway, um, you might remember years ago, wasn't there a movie or something about the blob? And as the blob kept rolling along, it just absorbed everything it ran into, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, that's kind of the way it seems like this wokeness movement has done. Um, as it goes along and as it evolves, it kind of absorbs more and more things. Um, and I think today it probably also has incorporated... Um, Palestinian rights and the the whole aspect of um, Israel is the aggressor, even though they were the ones who were attacked on October the seventh, um, and so that has now been incorporated into all of this. We said, kind of what you would identify with left wing political ideology has been incorporated in with this movement, and um, continues to be. Pretty much against anything God tells us we, we should stand for, the, it's against. Um, and that's a good way to put it. Um, I remember years ago, um, it occurred to me, you know, there's a lot of evil in the world, right? I mean, we're just talking about a little, little aspect of it tonight, but there's a lot of evil. I mean, what's going on in Ukraine and um, sex trafficking and all of these all of these things, and it's almost like there's an orchestrator behind it, a director of the orchestra of evil, you know, bringing in this part and that part and that part, um, and there is. <laughs> He's called Satan. Um, even though a lot of modern theologians say there's no such thing as Satan, that's a, the, Jesus certainly talked about him. Um, who knows more about the spiritual realm than anybody else. And so uh, if you want to argue with Jesus, you go ahead. I, I don't recommend it. Um, but the enemy is obviously behind this, even if no human being is. And there are human beings that are trying to orchestrate various things, but no human being is strong enough to do it all. Uh, but the enemy is, and he's at work. The Bible t warns us about him often, says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so we need to be, we need to be aware, and, uh, and that's part of why we're doing this this evening. Part of the, a lot of this is, has crept into, first, higher education, into colleges, um, and then also now to public education, <laughs> into schools, into the classrooms, and um, and so I think it's helpful uh, for us to be able to know what's, what's aware, what's going on. Um, it is affecting politics. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you that. Education, um, as we're going to talk about CRT. Medicine, uh, believe it or not. Uh, some say that, uh, you know, all the money is spent on medicine, on research to address those things that only affect white people, that those, those sicknesses or illnesses, um, seems to me that everybody gets cancer, seems to me that everybody has diabetes, um, 
We're going to talk more about this a little bit later, uh, but there's a very powerful book. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to. It's called One Blood, um, The Biblical Answer to Racism. And, um, you know, it all stems from the fact that people refuse to believe what the Bible teaches about race. Um, Where did every human being come from? We all came from Adam and Eve, all of us. Red, yellow, black, white, purple, green, whatever. Um, and Adam and Eve, and, and biology tells us that. Genetics is telling us that. Um, the more and more research that's being done, DNA is telling us that. Um, and so if people just understood that everybody on this planet is my cousin, I, th- I think now, what do they say, like we're down to like the, 32nd or more generation or something, I don't know, we're, like the 32nd cousin is the most we're removed from anybody else on earth. Um, we're all related. Even though our skin colors vary, even though our eyes um, structure may be a little different, um, we speak different languages, the Bible tells us where the languages came from. Um, if we just Pay attention to what the Bible has to say. Um, And so, um, that's what I say. We're all, (laughs) everybody is susceptible to the common diseases of of human beings. And um, do we need to make sure that blacks have equal access to health care? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And whites have equal access to health care and Latinos and everyone else, um, that no one should be denied based on. And there was a time, we're going we're to talk a little bit about that too, there was a time when, when that was very much the case. It was, there was lots of discrimination based on, on that. It also um, has gotten into the area of mental health, entertainment, um, business, investing, um, and it also has filtered into the church. And so um, it's important, I think, that we take some time to to discuss it a little bit and determine what the Bible has to say about it. Um, Some related terms that we're uh, going to touch on, we said CRT, critical race theory. Um, We're going to define that in a little bit. DEI, um, some of you may work for businesses or corporations or Entities that talk a lot about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, And many um, colleges now have hired DEI coordinators. Many government agencies have DEI coordinators to make sure that equal numbers of Folks of various skin colors are hired, or greater numbers of non-whites are hired um, to make up for disparities uh, and so forth. Um, It's interesting that um, some colleges are now letting their DEI coordinators go um, because it's become very, very expensive to be able to fund all of these positions and all of the initiatives that they want to see happen. But it's, it's very, very pervasive, and certainly all the large companies now um, want to be very concerned about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Any of the investments that are made need to be made with an eye to make sure whites are not favored in any way, shape, manner, or form, um, and that non-whites are favored. That's usually um, now the, the emphasis. So then we get to that word intersectionality. Um, big word. Um, The interconnected nature of race, class, and now gender, and how they overlap and impact discrimination or disadvantage. Um, And so, um, this has to do with, if, if you're a white woman, you fit at a certain place. If you're a black man, you're at another place. If you're a Hispanic, child, there's another place. If you identify 
as someone other than your biological sex, then that's your gender and you fit another place. And so it's this, all of these various um, interconnected nature of all that. And so, uh, confused yet? (laughs) Um, This is, you know, God made it pretty simple. There's one race, there's the human race. Um, one of the things that's, uh, that's in this book that I've really appreciated, I don't know if any of you all remember in biology or not, we had those, um, what was it called, the Punit Square, where you had you know, somebody with blue eyes marry somebody with brown eyes, and then which trait is dominant and which trait is recessive, and what you can expect if they have four children. What are the likelihood that they'll have blue eyes, brown eyes, or whatever? And, and what they did is um, they took a set of parents that were mid-brown, um, like most Middle Easterners, and if they had 16 children, you say, man, that's a big family. It is today, right? But how many boys did uh, Jacob have? Twelve <laughs> and a girl. Um, and so, um, and if you go back beyond that, Adam and Eve, it doesn't tell us. It just said they had other sons and daughters. Remember, Adam lived to be, what, 900 and some years old? So there's a possibility he had lots of children. Don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But what they did, they took a Punit Square, two mid-brown parents um, producing 16 offspring that would vary from very white to very black and every variation in between. Um, and it's, it's, it's just genetics. That's, that's what it is. Uh, and it's not that there were, you know, wh- where did the idea of race come from? It came from Darwin. It came from the theory of evolution that certain human beings evolved from or, or didn't evolve as far as others. And, and so that it caused horrible things to be done to, to people. They, they displayed um, aboriginal pygmies at the World's Fair uh, in cages like an ape or a gorilla because these had not evolved as far as others. Now, they were very they were, they were intelligent as, as any other human being. Now, they hadn't been exposed to our culture. They obviously couldn't speak English or whatever else, but they had their own language and they had their own tools and they were human beings. They had, in every way, shape, manner, and form, DNA is identical to ours. Um, but, um, and so, the theory of evolution, the godless theory of evolution, um, took God out of the equation. And suddenly, it opened the door for all kinds of abuse and sin and everything else that we're still paying for today. Uh, It still exists today. People that look down on other people because of the color of their skin, um, the way their eyes are shaped, or or whatever else. Um, Let me stop there and see if there's comments or questions. Um, let's talk about some characteristics of wokeness. Um, generally, it divides people into two groups. Um, those who are woke and those who are not woke. Um, those who are oppressed and those who the oppressors. Um, now, biblically, the Bible says there's two groups of people too. There's those who are saved and those who aren't saved. Um, but God wants all to be saved, and so there there's, um, shouldn't be any distinction uh, in that regard. But not with wokeness. The wokeness says you are either oppressed because of the color of your skin, or you oppress other people because of the color. There is no middle ground. There is, there's nothing in between. And if, if you're white, then you are an oppressor. If you're not white, then you're oppressed. Um, Can't, Can't explain how that oppression is, but I know I am. 
Um, I've been told I am. That's right. And so it must be true. Um, and it's interesting that um, are, there, are there white people that oppress other people? Absolutely. Um, are there black people that are oppressed? Absolutely. Are there black people that oppress other people? <laughs> are there white people that are oppressed? Yeah. I, Anytime we paint someone with a broad brush based on skin color, you know, this is, this is not that much different from what Hitler did with the Jewish people. He said that all the Jews were um, out to get other people. They were vicious. They were a blight on society. And were, did some Jews act that way? Oh, yeah. And some Germans did too, and, and that's human nature. But when you say everybody in a particular ethnic group or skin color or whatever else, um, then, and this is usually coming from people that says, judge not lest you be judged. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the thing you're judging everybody on is skin color. Um, and notice, I've try to say skin color and not race, because there's only one race. It's the human race. And we have varying skin colors, um, but um, there's only one race. It's impossible. This is one of, the, one of the teachings of wokeness, and this is what's being taught in a number of schools today, colleges and so forth. It's impossible for anyone with the skin color of the oppressed to be racist themselves, and it's impossible for anybody with the skin color of the oppressor not to be racist. So in Western society, in the United States, um, this is generally interpreted that if you are uh, black, there is no way you could ever be racist. If you're white, there is no way you cannot be a racist. Um, and this is part of the, the, the teaching of this whole, this whole situation. It is a worldview. We've talked a little bit before about worldview, a way of looking at things in the world. Um, and all of us have a worldview. It's usually something we're not even aware of all that much until we stop and physically have to, to think about it. Um, it's shaped by a lot of things, um, most of which is our background and our upbringing and, and what we've been exposed to. Um, but certainly there is a biblical worldview, and for Christians, our worldview, the way we view the world, should be shaped by what the Bible says. Um, where does evil come from? It doesn't come from racism. E evil affects every single human being. We're all contaminated by sin. That's what the Bible says, um, regardless of our skin color. And so, we need to let the, the Bible shape our worldview. Um, the, according to the worldview of wokeness, the fundamental problem with our culture, our society, and human beings is an unequal distribution of wealth and resources because of racism. Um, that's why some people have more than others. That's why some people have less than others. It's all because of racism. Um, the Bible actually says no. That's, that's not the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem with um, human society is what? Sin. It's sin. And it affects every person, as we just said a minute ago. doesn't matter what color our skin is. We're all affected by sin. Um, Romans says that uh, we, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, we're all guilty in His sight. And so, if that's the problem, if, the, if that in fact is the problem, if racism is the problem, then the solution is to tear down every social structure and institution and then reset society so you can restart this whole thing in a way that won't have any racism. Um, and when I say institutions, notice there that includes the church, that includes the home, 
we've, we've got to redefine the home. A home is no longer a mom and dad and children. Um, we, we've got to redefine all of that. It can be two men. It can be two women. It can be three women and five men. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, we've got to redefine the home. We've also got to get rid of any legal structures in this country, throw out all the laws we've got, get rid of all the government, get rid of all the education and the whole financial structure, and do a reset. Um, take the wealth from everybody and then redistribute it so that everybody has the same amount. Um, there was a guy that did this a long time ago called Robin Hood. <laughs> He stole from the rich and gave to the poor, right? Um, the, what does the Bible tell us about um, if we have something and we see our neighbor in need? We're supposed to give. We're supposed to share. Does that mean that if I see the people on this side of the room have more than the people on this side of the room, does that give me permission to be Robin Hood and go Take what you've got and give it to them. No, absolutely not. That's, that's actually covered in the Ten Commandments. What's it called? It's, it's called stealing. It's called theft. But what about if the government does it? It's still called theft. Um, and, and so that is, that's part of what this whole issue of wokeism says. Um, we, we've got to take, and, and, the, and we can trust the government, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's the, the whole idea of let's redistribute, let's restart everything and do a, a total reset. And so if you don't give me what you've got voluntarily, then I'll have to take it through taxes. I'll have to take it through um, legal means. I'll have to take it by whatever means I can get it from you so that I can then turn around and, and give it to somebody else that I think really should have it. And they didn't work for it, um, but, but they should have it. Now, the Bible, as we just said a minute ago, tells us to share with those who are in need. But it doesn't, it doesn't tell us to go and steal from someone and give it to someone else. Um, that's something entirely different. Wokeism calls uh, for us to change laws or standards um, if there are disproportional racial outcomes. So, for example, what that means is um, if I find out that there are more people in jail who, in this case, are um, convicted of drug abuse, let's say drug abuse, that are black than those who are convicted of drug abuse that are white, then obviously the laws are racist. And so we've got to get rid of the law because of the outcome of that law. Um, and and that's, just, that's just one example. And so that's really what started a lot of the issue around the legalization of marijuana. Um, and now if, if there's a situation where, let's say, um, 90% of the of the blacks that are found to possess marijuana end up in jail, and only 10% of white individuals that are found guilty of marijuana possession end up in jail, then that's an, that's an issue. That's a problem. If the cops are looking the other way and they don't, they don't arrest white people when they see them with marijuana or whatever, then, then that's a problem. But just looking at the the outcome uh, does not necessarily indicate that the structure is racist. And so, um, but that's what, that's what wokeism indicates, that's what wokeism says, if there are different outcomes. Um, let's, let's turn it around, and this is also an issue. Um, let's say uh, more Orientals um, are successful at a particular standardized test than blacks, then it's obvious that the test is racist. It's been written in such a way so that it favors the Oriental uh, as opposed. 
And so that's become an issue. Um, is it possible that's the case? It is possible that's the case. It's also possible that some folks have, have prepared Asian, Asian folks are usually culturally very, very um, success-oriented. They're, they're very academic-oriented, and so um, that's part of their culture. And so um, just looking at the outcome is not necessarily the, the best way to look at it. Um, at what we just said, train, change the drug laws or whatever because of a certain skin color arrested, change courses in school when more of a certain skin color have done well or done poorly. Um, it's interesting, some of you know, um, I won't use the name since we're on live stream, but he, um, he attends here from time to time. He does some substitute teaching um, in one of the high schools here, and he was uh, subbing there one day, and he was talking, he was teaching government. And they got to talking about socialism. And a number of the students were very much in favor of socialism. You know, take, take from those who have, give to those who don't have, uh, and, and make everything equal. That worked out really well in Venezuela, didn't it? Anyway, um, and he said, so that's what you think should happen? Yeah. He said, okay. He said, here's what we're going to do. He said, we're going to take a test. He said, those of you that um, study really hard, he said, and, and got A's are going to now have C's because those who didn't study failed the test. But we're going to give them a C too. Everybody's going to, everybody's going to, oh, they, they just erupted. No, that's unfair. You would never, you can't do that. He said, that's what socialism is. By definition, that's what it is. And they uh, even then some of them still didn't make still didn't make the connection. Um, so, um, dangers. What are the dangers of? Oh, I'm sorry. The goal, the goal is equal outcomes, not equal opportunity. Equal, equal outcomes. Um, you know, in this country, we've always, well, and, and I don't here. We haven't always done that. It, there has not always been equal opportunity in some cases. Um, but but that's, that's the idea behind capitalism. That's the idea behind our, our economic situation. Give people equal opportunity. You can start a business. I can start a business. If you're successful at it and I fail... That's, that's not your fault that you succeeded. Um, it may or may not be my fault because I failed, but, but I fail. That's just the way things happen sometimes. That's the way things happen in, in, a, in an economy. Um, but under, under this system, under critical race theory, um, and under this woke idea, uh, then everybody succeeds at the same level. And those who work 70 hours a week um, and earn a lot, well, you've got to take what they've got and give it to the one who is only willing to work 10 hours a week and doesn't have much. Equal outcomes, not equal opportunity. Um, the goal is equity, not equality. Um, and so, uh, very, very different, um, very different strategy, very different goals. Um, that may be a good place since we're nearly at the point to, to stop this evening. So let me do that um, and ask. Uh, we've covered a lot of territory and mentioned a lot of things, and hopefully uh, I won't get shot, but we um, might get our YouTube channel canceled. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is this is actually what's going on in our country today, and this is this is what's happening. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more next time about why this is so dangerous. Um, obviously, we talked about the the threat of theft and stealing, whether it's done by an individual, whether it's done by the government um, or an institution. Um, 
Obviously, it's a theft of a grade if you take from somebody that studied and worked really hard and you give it to somebody that didn't. Um, that's uh, obviously not right either. And so there's a number of things that um, it leads to in our society, but also in the church where these pressures have also come. Before we finish, Elon, Joseph, and Haiti says, hello everyone at Antioch Church. Continue to pray for my family. Um, some things are not going well, just pray. And so we do want to pray for Elon, but also pray for all of the folks in Haiti. Um, we had an urgent prayer request we received from Haiti um, yesterday. Um, one of the CBC partners that we have in Haiti that's taken some of our CBC training courses, um, his brother was killed there yesterday or day before, earlier this week, in the violence that took place. He sent an audio to Brother Grover. Grover forwarded it to me, um, and it's what this man recorded at his house night before last, and it's all machine gun fire. Right out, I mean, it's right outside his house. Um, pray for the folks in Haiti. That's what's happening is when lawlessness, and, and it is, it's lawlessness, uh, there is no authority other than power. Whoever has the guns um, is now in charge, and there's no respect for life or property. Um, so pray for the folks there. Let's, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank You for the culture that we have that has been handed down to us by individuals that had an ethic based on what Your Word teaches. Father, um, many flawed individuals that got lots of things wrong, even as we do today. But Father, I pray that um, You would help us to be able to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Help us to recognize those pieces and parts that need to be preserved and held on to, um, and those parts that are sinful that need to be confessed, repented, and changed. I pray, God, that with and where there is any racism, hatred, whatever in us, that, Lord God, You would, con you would convict us of that. You would reveal us, reveal that to us, that we repent and turn from it, and Lord, that we would seek to do your will. Um, Father, I, I pray that you would help us to love all individuals, even as you love us, and that we would make your grace, mercy, and good news known to all. Be with our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Oh God, please intervene, protect them, and protect their families. And we thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.